Welcome everyone to another video in Souls of Defeats. Uh, in War Thunder today, we're going to look at the IU251, which is one of the most expensive premiums in the game. It was also one of the most controversial ones as well because, I mean, it's bat rating 6.7, and as you can see here, it also has a heat effect with 320 millimeters of penetration. And so, one, one would think immediately at looking at this tank is it's overpowered, etc., etc., but actually, it's far harder to play. Um, than you think. It is incredibly hard tank to play so I've decided to make a video showcasing the skills you need to have and how you should play it etc etc. It's one of our most played tanks and yes just like an outline, a starter. The So there's two ways basically you can play this. In this video I'm going to show you how to play it at 6.7 which is its battle rating and another video if maybe, maybe Maybe I might make one. I don't know. Uh, I'll show you how to make how to play it at nine point two, which is what some people will say you should play it at. So, just line up wise, I use the F one obviously. And Tiger two P, I would prefer the Tiger two H, as you can see, I don't actually have the Tiger two H, and that's about it as tanks go because you want to keep um, you want to keep the tank playing time for the I two F one at an all time high. So then you don't start playing with tanks that have um, less um, RE, uh, RP gain. So. What that means is you can uh, efficiently and effectively grind for your next tank, whatever it may, might be. It might be something like uh, the Panzer III. It's a very good tank at excellent. Uh, but yeah. Next, uh, what we have is HE219A7. Again, it's not the premium, but if you look at it, rank 4. So you can actually search the jets, which I am doing here. But of course, it also has the 30mm um, MK103s um, here have armor targets which you can kill tank with, tanks with. Next, HU162A2. Uh, I'm just choosing this because uh, I can't want to play this jet. It's, it's half decent, it's hard to play. And you also have the Focke Wolf 90D9. That's just my own preference. It's a beautiful plane. You might also want to take out something like the Adonia 335 if you can afford it. It has of course a 30mm MK103s and also it has um, bob -ombs, which can take out ground targets did you know. Now, you can take out the Arado 234B2, it doesn't have any guns uh, or any offensive armory, uh, um, armory armament. But of course, that is another thing you might want to do. Or you could always take it up to 7.0, take out the Horton, take out the C3 Arado, take out um, the 262, uh, rather. Of course, that's always up to you, but today we're going to showcase this. And obviously, if you really want to, you can take out the Unicorn. Um, but yeah. It's a bit of a kind of weird tank to play, uh, plane rather to play. It has the armored targets, this one here, nope, this one, which is excellent at destroying tanks, or at least penetrating tanks. But yeah, so let's get into the game. Okay, right, let's see. So here we are, we are in our dens, and as you can see, just before we start the game, I have loaded out Hesh as my primary round. Now, since we are in 6.7, Hesh might be the smarter option because it has far more power. Um, or pen, well, after like, after pen effects, pen we say, uh, then, uh, heat of S. So, as you can see, this panther is in my way, so I'm get him, giving him a bit of love with my, um, machine guns just to show him who's boss, you know. These are the same machine guns that are in the leopard, even though he probably doesn't know that. So, if you can see on the map what we are doing, we are actually going round, um, like in a flanking maneuver around A, because A is obviously the focal point of the game, so everyone will be at A, so that's why we uh, go around in order to have a flanking position, because we don't want to be in the, right in the middle of it, we want to be in a position where we can actually attack without being attacked ourselves, so um, as you can see, we're going around the building, now uh, you can probably know this is actually a post commentary, Not I'm not actually playing the game as I'm commentating because it was far too hard for me to do that. It's actually very difficult to play this tank. As you'll see later because situation awareness is key for this tank and I couldn't do that whilst commentating at the same time. So we're going out right now at the boundary of the map because we don't want to be seen before we get into position otherwise the game will end here and there will be um, uh, no more Hatchless K. No. So, right as you can see we are now um, approaching that building, you can see at the very edge of the screen, or uh, it's more in the centre, now I'm pointing right at it. That is my usual um, f um, flanking position. It's right at the end here, and you can see that I've stopped here, looking around, searching for tanks, and uh, surprise, surprise, I can't see any. 
because I usually use this um, a tactic when I'm actually playing in 8.2 battles but um, as you can see, I'm saying as you can see far too often but I mean it links the viewer to this video but there is no one flanking so I'm now going into into the battle area because I want to get uh, more into the action because obviously there's no one coming around that I can actually shoot at so this is where your situation awareness has to be key because attention to the designated grid zone that's someone saying look there's a guy over there now I forgot that I actually spotted someone look yeah I can spot someone I can see someone here unfortunately the bushes actually stopped me in the scoop so what I have to do is I have to be super sneaky and uh, well, maybe not for this skill, but I have to shoot with in third person mode. See again, the bushes, I can't see anyone. But now, simple the fur. There we go. That's why I use Hesh. In, if I was Heath Fest, I would have gone straight through the driver and the machine gun and nothing else. And I would have died because the M46, no, it's M26, sorry, would have saw me and then would have thought, aha, and it would have one shot me because Amarak is right at the front. So that's um, the situation awareness that you have to have. Um, obviously, this isn't the highest quality settings, otherwise all the bushes would be in the way. But um, you need to use what you have for this tank. It really is like that. I'm now advancing behind the enemy. And that will really surprise them, because they wouldn't expect me to be behind them. They would have thought, right, the enemy's at the front. A hasn't yet been captured, we need to capture it before the enemy does. Now, as you can probably hear, that I heard the 122mm of an IS something. I don't know what it is. And there we are. It's not an IS-6, but it certainly is a tank. And we just... Yes, it is a heater fest, but went straight through him and out the other side. T-34-85 down. Now, we saw another tank. That might have been the IS-6, uh, IS-2 that I was thinking about. Just put the one right in the back. But no, well, yes, actually, it was the IS-2 I was talking about. And I destroyed him, because I'm the best. As you can see, I am now looking to the left, and, oh, tank spotted. This is why Thank You Behind is great because now, as you can see, he defests, barely does anything. As in, well, it does do loads, but it doesn't kill him. But he still doesn't know where I am, so that's when uh, he flies away, runs away. Now we've got his engine and his transmission, so he's not going anywhere soon, especially since he has to repair his cannon breach and has well, one or two, well, two crew members left. So that's going to take him a while to actually get in a position to kill me. So then we just go around and. Right at the back. This is where you need to have your knowledge. I didn't want to go around him and kill the driver because I knew that uh, also there's another enemy tank there because I knew that the gunner would have been up again. So I could just kill the gunner and that's it. He only has one crewman dead uh, left and he's dead. So I saw another tank here. I chased him but he wasn't there. So I went round and there he is. It's another M46. Now obviously M46s or M26s at this point, at, well when I was playing this were very popular because of the heat FS. Uh, obviously, um, and this is a very annoying, this is why you don't use heat FS. Um, I think this actually isn't M46, I'm not too sure because I don't really know my tanks well. No it wasn't M46, my bad, but yeah he's dead. And that's why I don't really use heat FS um, that often, because that took me three shots to kill him, with, whilst the Hesh would have just taken one. But obviously, Hesh has a far lower penetration value. But you can probably see I switched the heater to Hesh, so then I have that premium killing um, position. Uh, well, shell. I've now gone to cap because um, I saw a tank there. Hesh. No, it was dead. But that's fine. I mean, the Hesh is actually um, costs nothing. Now, I saw an M18 here. Now, I don't want to go attack him because um, the R2F1 has no armor, basically. It would have easily obliterated me. But instead, I captured the zone because this is the premium tank. You want as many points as you can. Uh, uh, keep note of this tiger position here. I gave him a bit more of my love with my machine guns. But now, as you can see, I know that there's an M19. And that was very scary, but it was only another tiger. But I know there's an M19, so immediately I'm wary. I go to flanking position. And no one here. The tiger is dead. The one that I to uh, told you to keep note of. The one with the white camo. M19. He saw me, but bang. Heshed. Now, I have an IS uh, something. I don't know what one it is, but I know that uh, I probably don't want to fight him. 
as you can see I've switched to heat FS. You need to know which ones to which rounds to use and when. But heat FS against a heavy tank is definitely a good choice. Now you can see, because I saw this tank, I didn't want to go approach it from the front. So I went round back. Very easy. This is this is how you should play the tank. You need to know where you are and how you are and where the enemy tanks are. But I still kept looking around, situation awareness has to be key here. And uh, I was lagging a bit. And here's the tank, here's our friend. He looks and easy through the ammo. Bang, big explosion, big hit. Now, as you can see, I'm now in a cover nice covered position. I can see clearly where the enemy are going to approach from. And uh, I just sit here for a bit. But. You can see our team's getting slaughtered, and there's another tank. This is my mistake that I make that really. Well, I wouldn't say it costs us the game because the game's already dead. As we go around to kill him, bang. Another IS2. But, I mean, at this point here, the game is over, really. I mean, if you had kept an eye on the um, battle, then you'd have known that uh, we're dead. Our team is, has been obliterated. Now you can see the Tiger 2P that I was talking about. I have basically nothing on it. I don't have any parts, any anything. So there's a nice plane going over there, and that's when I've decided maybe I should take out a plane after this. And of course, I haven't really played the Tiger 2P or any of the Tiger 2s. I don't realize I don't have an anti aircraft gun, so I can't kill him. And he goes in for the swoop. I still, I saw they has bombs. Tiger is really too slow to maneuver around. Bombs go. Bang. Now, for some reason, I was able to repair, but I wasn't able to put out that fire. So, there I am sitting away, being burnt, and there's a guy there. I can't kill him. Can't go in front because of my tracks and also my transmission and stuff. And I die. So, was that spawn camping? Uh, kind of, yes. Uh, not sp spawn camping, rather, spawn pushing. Because at this point, remember, they've won, basically. The enemy team has won. We have no one else in our team. So, I take out my HE162A2. It's kind of like a trump card that I have in this special rating because no one finds, no one sees this plane. Like It's, it's a very rare plane to see in combined battles or tank RB. But it's also, it's, it's, it's difficult to play. It's not that fast or acceleration wise or speed wise when it's um, stock, which is how I have it now. The cans are okay. Again, stock ammo belts, which I have now, aren't good. And the movability is mediocre. And it ha does have WEP, but it overheats the engine really quickly. So, as you can see, I saw a plane here and I went for it with my Hawkeyes, with my great tactics. Also another plane, and I decided to go for the high one because the other one was being engaged. I'm actually going at very good speeds. Now I take a shot here, but I miss. Uh, you know, typical me missing my shots. And at this point, as you can see, I I am really lacking as well. But I'm also uh, going behind that uh, plane's uh, F4U, I believe. So yeah, I go down. Right on him, and uh, I miss again. No, I get a hit, but again, like I said, I don't have the air target ammo belt. I have the stop ones, and they're very bad. So what I decided to do here, I decided to use my superior speed as a jet. Now, this is in inverted commas because um, this jet isn't very fast, and I'm going to stall. And that's when I have my situation awareness on key. I have, uh, I need backup. I call for backup. And uh, look, there's another plane that's coming in. And oh dear, doesn't look so good. But no, he misses me, so we're all good. And he got me. So the F for you that I wanted to kill just uh, destroyed me very easily, actually. So it's so embarrassing, especially since I'm a, in a jet that's such a high, a much higher battery rating than it. So now we're gonna take out the HU 219A7, which you saw in my KV1D video. It's great, um, but no, maybe not in this situation. In this situation, when they um planes up in the air. It's not exactly the best, but you know, we have to use what we have to use uh, at this current point in time. The battle is over, but I might as well get as much um, RP and uh, um, not XP, silver lines as I can. So, take out a premium plane, you know, kill some tanks, kill some planes. That's the plan, anyway. So, what we do, we see some planes, and if I went for the ground targets, then I wouldn't have necessarily got a kill, but go for the plane. We can get somewhere, you know, maybe. 
there's another plane, the, the sensor one that's coming straight at me. So what I decide to do is uh, really too many targets to choose. There's a plane here. Hits, which is you very rarely get hits in this plane. Just like in the hunt, you very rarely get hits. But then there is another plane that's coming, so I thought, you know, head on with this plane. I'm dead anyway. And uh, he didn't look at me. Then he died. And this is where I very, very stupidly just went up and I killed myself. So these things happen. I'm the best player in the team, but I died. So still got an head target destroyed, but not enough RP ultimately. So yeah, look at that. Wait, playing by the way the G6. And um, actually, I already made a video on it. Maybe I'll remake a video very soon, hopefully. But yeah, thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, we had a good time watching my videos, and uh, hopefully we will have a part 2 of this where we play out the RU251 in a 9.0 video, but uh, not a battle rather, or an 8.0 battle, you know, top tier, see how it plays over there. So yeah, thank you for watching, and goodbye.